Hello and welcome. My name is Kyle Roberts. I'm a senior technical marketing engineer with F5. Today we'll be doing a technical demonstration of OWASP's automated threat OAT009 CAPTCHA defeat. We'll briefly cover the state of CAPTCHAs before doing a live demo of using Selenium with Python and a CAPTCHA solving API service that uses real human click farms. Before diving into the details, let's take a moment to review what CAPTCHAs are and how they work. CAPTCHA is a backronym for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to tell computers and humans apart. CAPTCHAs were first implemented in the late 1990s as a rudimentary reverse Turing test to help websites filter out growing volumes of problematic bot traffic. CAPTCHAs come in many forms, including the reCAPTCHA shown here. CAPTCHAs provided a good defense against automated attacks when they were first introduced nearly two decades ago presenting an obstacle that the early generations of bots couldn't easily overcome. However, as bots evolved and started solving CAPTCHAs, the CAPTCHAs started to get more and more complex and difficult for humans to solve, such as the CAPTCHA shown here. OWASP defines CAPTCHA defeat under OAT009. There are many third-party services that solve all forms of CAPTCHAs for a small fee. Some use optical character recognition, AIML, and real humans to solve CAPTCHAs. We'll be running a demo today using Selenium with Python and a CAPTCHA solving service called 2CAPTCHA. Let's start out by taking a look at the 2CAPTCHA website. At first glance, we see the highlights of the service, like pricing information at $1 for 1,000 solved CAPTCHAs, CAPTCHA Bypass API working for Python, PHP, Java, and others, and somewhat of an SLA to get an API response in less than 12 seconds. They also make it very easy to become a human CAPTCHA solver and work for 2CAPTCHA. They have lots of integrations as well to ensure their service works with other automation tools. We can see the different types of CAPTCHAs they support, as well as the accepted payment methods, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and others. Our CAPTCHA defeat demo will be using an internal application called Hackazon. First, let's attempt to log in as a human user without solving the CAPTCHA. We can see that the CAPTCHA is requiring us to validate that we're human before we sign in. Once we complete the CAPTCHA, it determines that we're humans using a web browser and we're allowed through. The CAPTCHA is working as expected. Let's look at how CAPTCHA leverages access tokens to determine if we're a bot or not. We have two incognito browser windows open side by side. If we open Chrome Dev Tools and find the text area tag of the reCAPTCHA, there's a parameter called display, which is currently set to none. If we delete this or change it to inline, it will display a text box. The text box is where the trusted token goes after you've validated that you're not a robot. Let's make this change on both browser windows. Now that that's complete, we can see the text box in both windows. Let's click I'm not a robot on window one, and we're presented with a puzzle. We'll click all squares that have votes, and after we've successfully solved the CAPTCHA, notice that it inserts a trusted token into the text box in window one. The thing is, attackers don't actually need to check the I'm not a robot checkbox at all. They just need the token to go in the box. Let's prove it by copying the token from window 1 and pasting it into window 2 and log in without ever checking the CAPTCHA box. So all an attacker needs is someone to go to the site, solve the CAPTCHA, send them the token. Good thing there's an app for that, and it's an API service that integrates with our Python script as well. Time to automate the login process to provide scalability and leverage the human CAPTCHA solver service to this attack. As we run our Selenium Python script, we'll see the browser automatically open and begin to inject credentials into the site. As the browser automation is running, we're going to modify the text area tag so we can see the token once it's passed back from the 2CAPTCHA API service. The bad actor uses the Selenium script with the API to instruct one of the two CAPTCHA humans to visit the site and check the box themselves. They'll get a token, because they're human, which they pass back to the fraudster via the API. All the fraudster needs to do is tell the script to place that token into the hidden text box and click submit. The fraudster does not need to check the I'm not a robot checkbox, but having a valid token will cause the website to treat the bot as human. And that's how an attacker would perform CAPTCHA defeat with reCAPTCHA using browser automation and a CAPTCHA solving service API using real humans. F5 is uniquely positioned to help you solve these challenges by meeting your customers where they are. With our flexible bot and fraud deployment models, we provide a variety of insertion points and connectors to help you deliver superior efficacy without reliance on traditional controls like CAPTCHA and MFA. F5 offers these pre-built connectors for application platforms like F5 Distributed Cloud, Big IP, and Nginx, e-commerce platforms like Salesforce Commerce Cloud, Adobe, 
and popular CDNs like AWS CloudFront and Cloudflare. Now let's run the same attack with our big IP bot defense connector protecting the application. Inside of our distributed cloud tenant, we have pre-configured the bot defense service and big IP IAP connector. We can see that under Manage Applications, we have the Hackazon IBD app name and the Big IP IAP connector type. We use the information found by clicking on the ellipsis to add the cloud app and tenant information to the Big IP proxy that will be protecting our Hackazon login page. Moving to the Big IP IAP configuration, we can see the F5 IBD CS template has been imported, which contains all the information for a distributed cloud tenant shown previously. If we open up the IAP, let's look at a few key parameters. We can see the XC bot app service is referencing the template that we imported. We have JS injection enabled being inserted after the head tag, and we've specified the endpoints to be monitored by the bot defense service for the login page of our Hackazon application with an action of block for any automated post requests. Now let's run our automation script again and see the service in action. As we run the Selenium Python script, we'll see the browser window open as we did before and start entering username and password information. This part would be blocked as well if we had specified get request to be blocked in addition to posts in the IAP configuration earlier. The script is sending the reCAPTCHA information over to to CAPTCHA as we saw last time. This time, however, we're blocking any automated application from HTTP posts into our user login endpoint. We see the block message that was configured, and even though the CAPTCHA would have been bypassed, our bot defense signals stopped the automation from happening. That's all we've got for this demo. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching.